Hello and welcome to episode 10 of the Product Biz Podcast. Today we are talking about attracting customers on Instagram. So if you listen to episode 9, then you know that we are no longer competing on price. That is a game that we will not win. But now we want to attract the right people. We want to connect with them. We want to build a relationship with the right people that want to buy our products, that don't need convincing, that easily go to our website and purchase from us. And that's exactly what we will be defining today. Are you ready to go behind the scenes and learn what it really takes to create consistent sales each and every month with your handmade small business? Join me, Monica Little, self-taught multiple six-figure small business owner and your product business coach as I give you the insight and inspiration on how to better run your business and increase your sales in ways that you may not have even been aware of so that your business can truly become what you knew it could be back when you first started. Learn how to let go of perfection, overcome the fear of failure that is holding you back, and finally start taking action so that you walk away feeling like you've cracked the code on how to run a successful small business. You're listening to the Product Biz Podcast. So let me know if you can relate as we talk about Instagram. Is one of the very first thoughts in your head when I ask you, how is Instagram going for your small business? Do you think, well, I wish I had more followers? Or if only I had 500 followers, or if only I had 1,000 followers, then I'll be happy. Then I'll get more sales. That is something that I used to think too with all of the different businesses that I've ran, if only I could get more followers, then, you know, I just need to reach that next level. Then things will start to work out. Then I'll get more sales. But looking back, that is one of the biggest mistakes that small business owners can make when it comes to focusing their time and energy on Instagram. Most business owners make the mistake of focusing on the number of followers and think to themselves, if only I could grow my audience and get in front of more people, then I could get more sales. And then you end up waiting and waiting and waiting to get more followers before you decide to show up. And you end up waiting for a really, really, really long time. What I want to make sure that you know is that a small following does not mean small sales. Because it's not a matter of how many followers you have. It's a matter of knowing who they are and how to connect with them to create loyal customers that constantly buy from you. So worrying about the number of followers that you have is like having a theater full of 500 people that came to see you. But instead, you're looking at the door for who else is going to come in. But if you have those 500 followers and instead you truly connect with them and they buy $200 worth of products from you this year. That is $100,000 right there. When you know who your audience is and how to connect with them, you attract the people that are as excited as you are about your products. They see the value, they resonate with your brand, and they don't need convincing. Your business stands out to them on all platforms, even in saturated markets, and you attract consistent sales and you attract new followers really, really easily. So before we get into the how, I want to talk through a quick example of the power of attracting the right customers. So have you ever heard of this product called the V-Bar or the V-Toner? And you're probably saying no. But have you heard of the Thigh Master? And I will guarantee that you're probably saying, yes, of course, I know what the Thigh Master is. Did you know that the Thigh Master and the V-Bar or the V-Toner are the same exact product? But the Thigh Master just focused on how to connect with the right people. It was rebranded and that led to over $100 million in sales. That is the power of attracting the right people to your audience. It's the same exact product. The same exact product, but just a different name, a different marketing plan targeted towards a different audience. So you can see how connecting with your audience and really resonating with them and knowing how to connect with them can lead to two completely different sets of results. 
when you build a real business, you have to know who you are selling to and how to connect with them. And when you sell on Instagram, it's all about bringing that connection to a more personal level. But how do you expect to sell anything on Instagram if you don't know who you are selling to or how to connect with them in the first place? And instead, you're just worrying about more followers and more followers. And if only I had more followers. You can get easy, consistent sales on Instagram by knowing who your audience is and how to connect with them. And when we talk about how do you do this, how do you actually connect with them? You have to know specifically who you are talking about. And this comes down to their demographics. Where do they live? What's their income? What do they do in their free time? What type of job do they have? You have to know your customer on that specific of a level. You have to know what their interests are and how can you relate to those interests? You need to know what their problems are. How can you solve those problems? You have to know everything about them by creating this target audience demographic. And this will help you to know what should you share? Where should you go to markets? What do you want to talk about on Instagram? What content should you share on Instagram? Everything comes down to defining your target audience. And there's a quote that Kayla from Docs Design, who is an awesome branding guru, by the way, she redid the Product Biz Academy branding and I absolutely love it. So while we're on the topic of target audience and branding and everything that comes into play, I have to mention this quote that she mentioned. There is riches in niches. So if you know what a niche is or a niche, however you decide to say it, a niche is a very specific segment of the market, of the population of people that you are targeting. So if you can niche down, if you can define who your audience is and what they like and what they do and how to talk to them and how to connect with them, if you can get so specific with your niche, well, that's where the quote, there's riches and niches comes from. Because then on the flip side, your target audience, they feel like you're connecting with them. They're like, yes, this girl is right on. This person is right on. This business is right on. I agree with them. I want to support them. I want this product. I need this product. When I think about plant-based beauty and the niche that I'm serving, there's so many specific demographics and interests of the people that I talk to. Most likely these people also shop at Whole Foods. They buy organic produce because they know the importance of organic. They probably like to drink a matcha latte in the morning that's dairy-free. Maybe they don't eat gluten or dairy. And I can connect with them in these ways by sharing the matcha tea latte that I drink in the morning, by sharing the produce that I buy on a weekly basis, by building that connection with them. But then I can also talk to them in a way like they know why organic skincare is important. I'm not trying to teach them. I'm not trying to convince them. I'm talking that to them in a way that they know it's, it's important. And when they read the words that I say, they're like, yes, I agree with this. Yes, yes, yes. This is what I stand for too. I agree with this. I want these products. This is something that I want to add to my routine. So when you get super, super specific on who you're talking to, on the flip side, when they read it, they can just totally resonate with you. They are just on the same wavelength as you. And that's how you build connection. So you have to define who they are, how to talk to them, how to speak to them. And there's so much that goes into this. It's the psychology of marketing. It's really understanding who your people are. So I want to ask you, where are you with your audience? Are you connecting with your audience? Are they engaging with you? And you have easy, consistent sales from loyal customers. Or maybe are you starting to think about how to connect with your audience, but you're not necessarily there just yet. Or... Do you post on social media just to post and you spend most of your time trying to get more followers? What will happen if you keep waiting six months, 12 months, waiting for more followers before you learn how to actually connect with your audience? Isn't it more important to connect with the people who do follow you instead of waiting for more people to join? Successful entrepreneurs think differently. They know that if they can connect with the people already in their circle, then they are one step closer to success. And then those people who they authentically connect with will share their products, and that leads to more followers. And your content will speak to them, and that will lead to more followers. And when you stop focusing on the followers and start focusing on serving your people, not only do your sales come, but your followers rise at the same time. So there's no, absolutely no reason that we should be focusing on followers at all. Followers does not matter, not the slightest bit. But I think most people use it as a crutch. 
They say, oh, if I only had 200 followers, then I'd be on my stories more. If I only had 500 followers, then I would create some reels and show my face. It's an excuse not to play the game. It's an excuse to stay where you are. It's an excuse to wait. And waiting leads to more waiting. So if your sales aren't where you want them to be, what have you done differently? Successful small business owners, they show up and they make the opportunities happen, regardless of how many followers they have. Just look at the small business owners that you look up to. Can you look at any one of them and say that they waited around for more followers and got lucky that an opportunity came to them? Do you think they somehow managed to get their products in stores on multiple platforms with repeat loyal customers while just waiting for the opportunity to be presented to them on a silver platter? while waiting for more followers before they step outside of their comfort zone. I know that sounds silly to even consider. And I don't need to tell you that if you want to get consistent sales a month after month from all of these different platforms, from repeat loyal customers, that instead of waiting around, waiting for more followers, you'll need to make the opportunities happen too. You'll have to find the opportunities. Put yourself out there and do what is uncomfortable. Imagine where your business will be 12 months from now if you are still crossing your fingers and waiting for the opportunity to come to you, waiting for more followers. Or on the flip side, where your business will be if you decide to commit to it and to make it happen. So we have to push this view of waiting for more followers to the side and we have to start taking action now and we have to start connecting with our people now and find how to connect with them and test and learn and experiment and learn how to get sales. But I get it. One of the hardest parts of being a small business owner is keeping your spirits high when things are tough, when you're working through all of this. This is this is tough. This is a lot of work and it can be really challenging when you're trying everything you can think of to grow your business, but your sales are increasing. When you're working so hard and spending so much time on your business, laying this groundwork that is so important, but the progress is kind of trailing behind you. It hasn't caught up just yet. It can be really tough when you see others growing their business, what seems to be so easily living the life that you want, that you start to question if you'll ever get there too. And most people start to pull back at this stage because it's hard. It's really hard to keep going without the reinforcement that what you're doing is working. But one of the most important beliefs that you have to create as a small business owner is the belief in yourself, the belief in your future, that it can happen no matter what results you've had in the past. You have to know deep down that your dreams are possible, even if they haven't come to life just yet. You have to know deep down that your dreams are achievable, even if your past tells you otherwise. You have to know deep down that you are the one that can make it happen. Because then, then you'll start to show up differently when your business is fueled by belief in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, you'll start to see those positive changes. You'll start to take risks, try new things, learn and adjust because you know it's all taking you down the path to your inevitable success. And before you know it, you'll start to see results, progress. It starts to catch up on you. The reinforcement that you're working on the right things. And it's all fueled by the belief in yourself, your business, and your future. That is how you grow your business. So here's your reminder that your dreams are possible. And take the time to lay this groundwork of defining your audience, defining your content, defining how you speak to them, how you connect to them, what interests you have in common, what you can bond over, how to sell to them. Spend the time to learn marketing. And then you'll start to see all the doors open from connecting with your niche, with your people, with your target audience. And then your business will just flourish from there. And I'm so excited to see how it all comes together. 
So thank you so much for tuning into the Product Biz Podcast with this episode all about attracting the right customers to your business. What I really want to achieve with all of these episodes is to change your perspective, your frame of mind on how you run your business. I'm not going to give you the step-by-step how-to. I will give you some general guidelines on how to connect with your target audience, but I'm not going to create every single episode on how to do X, Y, Z, because you know what? There are thousands of podcasts out there that talk about how to do this and people listen to them and they don't take any action. So my goal with this podcast is to get you to change your perspective, change your belief in yourself, change your belief in what you should focus on. So then you actually do the work. But like this episode, it's showing the importance of reducing this need for more followers and changing the perspective to instead focusing on how to define your target audience and connect with them to get more sales, how to believe in yourself that it is possible so you actually do the work that's required. That is so much more important than any how-to informational podcast out there, in my opinion, because we have to get you to believe it and see it before you take the next steps. So thank you so much for spending the time with me here today. If this resonated with you, then please send me a DM on Instagram at Monica Little Coaching and let me know your thoughts. And then I will see you on the next episode of the Product Biz Podcast. Thank you so much for hanging out with me here inside the Product Biz Podcast. If you love this episode, don't forget to subscribe and to leave a five-star review. And if you're interested in learning more about Product Biz Academy, my signature group coaching program for handmade small business owners like you who are looking to create consistent online sales with their business, then go to theproductbizpodcast.com to join the waitlist. Doors are currently closed, but you'll be first notified when they reopen. Thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next episode of the Product Biz Podcast.